Okay, so we're at part two of the Halloween and Wonderland mini album. And on this page, we have a trick trick or treat that I stamped on there. I think that's from an Inka Dinka Do stamp. I can't remember. Uh, it might be a Studio G, but it's a square stamp. And what I did was I put the ink on one piece at a time and then did it horizontal. So, guys, when you're looking at your stamps, look at how they're formed because you could maybe do some masking or just rem like I, what I did on this one was I stamped the ink pad on there or stamped the ink on it, wiped it off with the um, with a baby wipe the pieces that I didn't want to be inked and then I inked it onto the piece so I, I was able to take a block stamp that's like really wide or really you know it's blocked shaped square shaped and made it a horizontal shape so you know keep that in, in your mind and then there's a little spider web that I sp uh, stamped over here this is happy Halloween and it's this spider web and then these are gold embossed and again I think they look like tombstones anyway so open them up there's room for pictures they're just all of these are plain so I'm not going to keep opening them up and then of course there's a little pumpkin he looks kind of scary and there's our Cheshire cat and our and our um, caterpillar and I put some stickles on them as well I used the marmalade on the pumpkin and an, um, a blue color on the on the caterpillar and then of course this pumpkin has some and then around the vines I went around it with a greenish it's like an olive color it's like a greenish brown color just to kind of make it shine and then on this side I have of course Alice with the queen and more of these and I just have spiders on these and this says um, through the looking glass and what Alice found there and because to me the queen looked like she was in the looking glass so and of course she has stickles and the queen has stickles and I added another rose down at the bottom and of course it's painted so it's 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 um, I'm gonna zoom in so you can see the detail here but um, let's see if I can get it to focus come on oh I'm not gonna bother with it there we go um, through the looking glass and I, I've stamped the um, spiders randomly all through here with the spider webs that say happy Halloween and then of course off with her head I love I love Alice in Wonderland but um, I think graphic 45 did an amazing job with this with this um, paper line and then of course you have um, the court um, I guess he's a gesture the bunny I love him too and he's taken from the book and I just colored him in with some markers and gave him some gave him some um, really brightness to him and distress the edges of with the antique linen and I add a little prima bling up at the top and then of course this is the part in the story that talks about um, they're trying to find out who stole the Queen's tarts and then of course this is who stole the tarts on the flag here and then of course here's here's the sloppily painted roses again with a little prima bling and um, I added a little stick pen here and on the back of my bunny I have a little journal card and there was another one of these in there with some fibers and then of course and the background I don't know if you can see in the video very well but the background is a texture fade from Tim Holtz it's the I thought it looked like the um, checkerboard that's on the lawn in the courtyard at the Queen's Castle and um, I have this kind of rested up I don't let me zoom in a little bit see if you can see it's kind of dark I don't know if you will or not but the um, roses the mini roses from Prima come with um, these long stems so instead of cutting the stems off I spiraled them around a toothpick so that they have a really you know they add a little something to to the collection there or to the arrangement there and then of course I went rubbed all over the Tim Holtz thing with the black ink and the gold so you can kind of get some ideas here so it's talking about the Queen's tarts missing and the Queen um, holding court and then over on this side I'm going to zoom back out again. 
we have the the I guess it's the got the court bunny. He's looking in the window. And I added some stickles to this section here so that um and because it's the candles and the light from the candles. And down here, again, I'm gonna zoom in again. Sorry guys. But I want you to see the details here. You see those hands that look like the clock hands? Those were actually where I cut these out. Those were little pieces that were left over between the two cuts. They look just like clock hands. So pay attention to your scraps. And then I just put like a um, heart, a red heart on top of them. Kind of like the queen thing since the queen's um, bunny was there looking in the window. And that is a piece of this a tag here and I left this one whole instead of cutting it in half and to me it looks like a coffin and you can open it up there's plenty of room for journaling or or um, photographs there and here we come to the end of the album we have we can't have an album of Alice in Wonderland without including the Jabberwocky. I mean, he is my, um, he is, um, part of the, the very end of the book. And I was started to say it was my favorite part, but he really isn't. Um, but when you look, I've included the excerpt from the book here and it's the part where it's written backwards so that um, Alice can't really figure out what is written there. So um, that's when she gets the idea that she needs to look through the looking glass. I don't know why this camera won't focus. I'm sorry guys. Close your eyes. There, you can open them back. Um, so what I've done here is I've added, that got turned around somehow. But I added this little mirror because that's kind of what she was doing was she figured out that she had to walk through the looking glass to be able to see things in the correct manner. And of course, there's the Jabberwocky. And then I'm going to kind of bring it in so you can see again the details. This is a piece that was off the bottom of the paper line that says um, Halloween in Wonderland. And then this is a rose that is from um, some fibers that I got from um, Hobby Lobby. And it's got a little pearl on the inside of it. And of course, there's our Jabberwocky. I really wish that there would have been a bigger a bigger piece of him in the paper collection. But um, that was the best I could do. So I copied the piece of the book that talks about him. And um, where Alice is talking about holding um, up the glass and looking at the words inside the glass. So I had to include a mirror in there. And then in this tag, it says, um, this is very curious. And then on the back of the, of the book, bop, uh, the book, I did, um, cut out some lace with the Baroque dye. And of course it's painted, you know, it's the back of the book. So it's painted, um, with the purple luminaire art. And then we're coming up on the very end of the book. Now the last, the last book, the part of the book binding in the back, I had to leave it really flat because it wasn't wanting to fit in the box and I didn't want anything damaged. So what I decided to do was hand write like a dreamy state. It's only a dream. So it's written over and over again. It's only a dream. It's only a nightmare. It's only a dream. It's only a nightmare. And it's just written all over the back of the book. And then it says, um, don't believe in reality and it's only a dream. It's just written over and over again. It's only a nightmare. It's only a dream written in gold. And of course, you know, I did the same distressing technique on the back of the book as I did on the front. Thank you guys for watching. I know this was a long video, but man, this is, this book had a lot of details and I just, I didn't feel like I could just gloss through it. Thanks for watching.